request a lot. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Confirm we can hear me clearly. Okay. Good morning and um, welcome to church today. Praying that the good Lord will meet with each and every one of us at our various points of needs in thy name of Jesus. Amen. As we welcome ourselves this morning, let us um, open up our hearts to God today just as we meet with him, believing that he will meet with us. And yeah. um, we will have a wonderful fellowship experience with God and with the people of God today. Amen. We'll start, by calling, we'll start by calling ourselves to worship this morning. And uh, we're going to do that by reading the NIV version of the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, the first three verses, and then verses six and seven. So that will be five verses in all. Isaiah, chapter 55, verse one to three, and then verse six to seven. That is the passage we're going to use to call ourselves to worship this morning. I pray the Lord will bless us as we listen to him. Amen. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not great? and your labor on what does not satisfy. Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good. And you will delight in the richness of fear. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. This is the words of the Lord to us today. This is the word that God is using to call us to worship today. And I pray that the mercies of God will richly dwell in us today and beyond. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless us as we worship together today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, I need to share. Can you help me to share? Thank you. We're going to be singing this morning, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. After which we're going to pray. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Let's sing together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortune of glory divine. Air of salvation, purchase of God, 
Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect communion. Perfect delight, visions of rapture, now burst on my side. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. All the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior, all the day long, perfect submission. All is at rest. I in my Savior, happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above. Feel his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Oh, that I this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. All that I long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior, all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior, all the day long. Praising my Savior, all that day long. I want you to turn that song to prayer this morning and say, Father, this is my story. This is my song. Praising you all the day long. You are my source of inspiration. You are the one that I praise. You are the one that I give glory to. If it has not been because of God's mercy, we would, we would not be here today. I want you to thank God for another Sunday, the first Sunday in the month of October, three more years, and this year is ended. I want you to recall all the blessings of God and worship him. 
and say, Father, this is my story, praising you all the day long. I want you to bless his holy name this morning. He is our king. He is the I am that I am. He is the lion of Judah. He is the ancient of days. He is the one that we call and he answers us. He is our backbone. He is our ever-present ever help in time of need. Because of him, we live, we move, we have our being. I want you to worship his majesty today. Sing a song of praise and say, Father, you are my God. Today, I just worship you for my story. This is my song, praising you all the day long. This morning, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for another thank day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you for, another for another Sunday. Day. Thank we you give for you another all the praise, oh Lord. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Father, for another Blessed day. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You Bless your name, thank you for what you, have, you are doing in my life. Thank you, you for what you. you will continue to do. Thank you, Lord, Lord Jesus, we Lord my God. you. Thank Lord, we exalt you your name. We magnify you. Oh, Lord, we magnify you. Story. This is Lord, my song. God, this is I, I want to thank you because of so keeping Lord, me alive. I want to thank you for delivering me from you, sicknesses, exalt, delivering me from accidents of any kind. Father, this is my story. This is my song. Blessed be your name, oh Lord, our God. I give you the praise, I give you the praise, I give you adoration. May your name be praised, oh Lord. May your name be exalted, oh Lord. May your name be magnified. May your name be lifted up, oh Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may your name be magnified. Thank you, Jesus. When we walk, you keep us from evil. There are things that we don't even know of. You keep us from evil. Blessed be your name, O God. We worship you. I want you to thank God for another morning. Thank God because we can come to worship you. Jesus is the one. He's the author of our relationship with him. Without him, we cannot be a Christian. Without him, we cannot be called by him. Without him, we cannot stand in his presence. But because of what he did on the cross of Calvary, because of what he is still doing, Today, we can stand in the presence of God. I want you to worship Him for another Sunday. Worship Him for this word that He's going to send to your life. Thank Him for what He's going to do again for you this month. Thank Him for what He's going to do again for you this year. Thank Him for what He's still going to do this week. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we give you praise today. Lord, this is our story. This is our song. Praising you all the day. Today, we are grateful to you again. We know that that is what you are today. You will that is what gives you joy, that we praise you, that our life gives you pleasure. Father, today, we praise your name, we worship you, we exalt your name, blessed be your name. Thank you for our children, thank you for our wives, thank you for our husband, thank you for the car we drive, thank you for the air we breathe, thank you for the water we drink, thank you for the food that we did not even prepare well, yet you let it nourish our body. Thank you for the times that we eat what we should not eat. But yet you keep us. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Blessed be your name, O oh God. We are grateful to you, Jehovah. We are grateful to you, Jehovah. We are grateful to you, Jehovah. Blessed be your name, O Lord our God, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. In Jesus' name we are prayed. I want you to pray and say, Father, today I've come to your presence. Speak your word to me. Today, touch my life again. Today, give me reason for to rejoice in your presence. Give me reason to be hopeful in your name. Give me reason to continue to walk with you. Help me to see you as my God again. Help me to be able to commit my life to you again. Help me to say, if no one joins me, still I will follow. Help me to say, Father, you are my only way. No other person. Meet my life today. Touch me today. When you are looking for somebody to touch, let it be me. It's me, O Lord. Lord, when you are looking for somebody to bless, let it be God. me, oh Lord. When you are looking Jesus for somebody to even send, let it be me. I am here, oh Lord, in your presence. Touch my life, oh God. Touch me, Jesus. Touch my life, oh Lord. Touch my life, oh Lord. Touch my life, oh Lord. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Touch my life, oh Lord, my God. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Touch my life, oh Lord, my God. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. I worship you, Lord, my God. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father, this is our story. This is our song. Praising yes, you all the day long. Thank yes, you, Lord. Father, for what you have done, what you are yes, doing in our life, what you yes, will continue Lord. to do. We bless yes, your name. Blessed yes, be your name in Jesus' name. We pray Amen. that today you will accept our worship service. Amen. You will meet with us. We will encounter you in Amen. the name of Jesus. Thank Amen. you, Father. In Amen. Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Well, welcome again to church today. We pray that God Almighty 
in his infinite blessings, in his infinite mercy, we bless each one of us today mightily and powerfully in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. It's already the month of October. I'm excited. Christmas is almost here. And I want to be the first person to wish you a beautiful, beautiful Christmas. I hope it's not too early to say Merry Christmas and, and Happy New Year in advance. God that has brought you and I this far, He will see us through to the end of the year. And we shall powerfully emerge uh, into the new year, out of this year. It's been a challenging year for the whole world. It's been a challenging year for humanity. But I want to thank God that you and I have made it this far. And I'm also praying that God will see you and I through in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please do take your phone and send a reminder to your friends around and ask them to join us in church this morning. Just send the link to them. Don't say, I don't know whether they will come. You just send it and leave the rest to the Holy Spirit. Send the link to them. Ask them to join you and you'll be surprised what the Lord will do. At this hour, we will go ahead and listen to a beautiful song, a song ministration. God will minister to us through the song. And after the song, we will hear, we will, we will read the scriptures. There is power in songs ministrations. There is power in reading and listening to the scriptures. After that, we will take the offering and the tithes of the day. Then we will go to time of a time to pray and just and just and just hear the word of God. We will hear the song. We will read scriptures. We will or we will take the offering. We will have time to 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 pray and just listen to God's word. And God will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let's hear the song. God bless you. You're all welcome in Jesus' name. Good morning, church. Um, today I'm going to be singing Workers' Law. May God bless you all as you listen in Jesus' name. Oh, 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 
Bless God again for that song. We pray that God Almighty in this infinite mercy will come to bless us. I'm sure we'll be working well on the technology in the coming days and the coming weeks. God will help us as we continue to uh, put wisdom and resources together to help us have a, stream, a streamless uh, free minist uh, song ministration and service generally. We we'll hear the word of God at this hour, and as we listen, please, we will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Our Bible passage today is taken from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 14, and 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 20. 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Verse 14, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20. And I read Alexander the metal worker did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20. Among them are Himanios and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. It's offering time, and offering times are blessing time. The scripture says it is more blessed to give than to receive. The scripture says that give and it shall be given unto you good measures pressed down shaking together shall men give unto your bosom the scripture says bring all the tithes and offerings into my house so that there might be food in my house and check it out if i will not open tear the windows of heaven open and pour down abundance of blessings upon you I will ask, therefore rebuke the devourer in your life. These are the words of God. 
and on standing on these instructions and promises of God, we are going to bring our offerings and our tithes. Even though this is an online meeting, I would like to give you the way to go about it so that you will you will you will have a stream free streamless way of giving your offering and your tithes. If you are in Canada, you can give your tithes and offering through an, the interact service. Through the interact service, you send your your offering and tithe to the email oasis at radianlife.net it's already in the chat venue oasis at radianlife.net that is the easiest way to give if you are outside of canada the way to do it is to go on to our website radiantlife.net radiant life dot net when you get to the uh, to the website mm. you will see the portion that says donate click on it and within one minute you are done you will follow the instructions on the donate button and you will to use your card whether it's a debit card a mastercard or a visa card you will to use it to give your offering two simple ways to do it to be able and if you use a a paypal a paypal you just use your paypal service and go to uh, 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 and flash out radiant life radiant life dot uh, dot net oasis at radiant life dot net that is also the email for our paypal email for our paypal so Two things to note in giving your offering as I'm about to pray. You pull out your phone device, you pull out your instructions. If you are in Canada, you go ahead and use the oasis at radiantlife.net for your interact giving. Or if you're outside of Canada, go into the uh, our website, radiantlife.net go to the search button to the donate button click on it within one minute 10 seconds you are true with your offering let us have a word of prayer as we give our offering our father and our lord we want to thank you because of your promises your word says give it shall be given press down shaking together shall men give unto your bosom lord i pray for this your servants this your children all over the world that are giving to your work today that you will mercifully and graciously bless them in the name of jesus much more than they have given you will bless them much more than they are given you will you you will transform their finances for good in jesus name your word says i will rebuke the devourer again for everyone the year today we rebuke the devourer on, 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 their, on their behalf. And we say, Lord my God, you will destroy the grip of the devourer in their life in Jesus' name. Those that are struggling with finances today, Lord, you will meet them at the point of their need. Help you will send to them. The help that they are not expecting will come their way. The word that they are expecting will come their way. They will find mails in the check, uh, uh, check, check in their mails. In the name of Jesus, debts that are not yet paid, Lord, you will help them be, that they be paid. In the name of Jesus, you will meet us, O oh Lord, in our financial challenges, and your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, everlasting Father. May your name be praised. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And this hour, I like us to just take some uh, some uh, some time to just worship the Lord with this song. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power.
all that was created, all things are for thy pleasure, they are our created, thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord. To receive glory, honor, and power for the was created. All these are for thy pleasure, they are our creator. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. I want you to at this hour just thank God that God has brought you and your family, your family and yourself into this day again. Go ahead and say thank you to the Lord Jesus. Go ahead and say thank you to the Lord Jesus. Thank you for bringing us into the first Sunday of the month of October. Let's magnify the name of the Lord. Let's say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you because you that have brought me this far will take me farther than here. You will not bring me to October 3rd to abandon me here. You did not bring me to October 3rd to leave me stranded. I want to thank you, Father, for who you are. I want to thank you for you are Jehovah. You are the King of Kings. You are the mighty God. We bless your name, O Lord. We bless your name, O Lord. Let your name be praised, O Lord and God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I want you to pray at this hour and say, Father, send me one word today. Send me one word today. One word. One word. One word. One word. Send me one word today. Now one word I will change my story. One word that will bless me. Send it to me today. Oh, Lord, my God, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, send me a word today. One word that will change my life. One word that will give me fresh perspective. One word that will give me a new thing. One word that will give me salvation. One word that will give me deliverance. One word that will heal me of my wounds, oh Lord, my afflictions. Send one word to me that will usher me into a new way of prosperity. Oh Lord, a new way of redemption in the name of Jesus. Father, by this word today, let my life never be the same for good. In the name of Jesus, thank you, everlasting Father. May your name be praised. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you again in Jesus' name. This morning we are looking at buttons. 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 Handling the difficult people in your life. Who is pressing the button of your life? These are buttons. Are the buttons of your keyboard? Buttons are so powerful. If you have your remote in your hands, you, your, your, the remote of your TV or the remote of your car, you know what buttons can do. You can be in your, in your bedroom. And you can just press the remote, boom, and something happens in the city room. Buttons are so powerful, so powerful. They are, there is this technology, whether it is a Bluetooth technology, whether it is an infrared technology, no matter what that is, buttons are powerful. If with your car, you can, you can even start your car without being inside your car, without being in, uh, 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 inside, around your car. You can just be in your room, and you, and you can just start the car, depending on the car you know you, you, you use. Buttons are powerful. Recently, I had a small keyboard I just acquired. I can use that keyboard to control my TV. Buttons are powerful. Do you don't have to have a wire to connect it to, to the device you are controlling. Buttons are powerful. Who is controlling? Who is pushing the buttons of your life? Who is far away somewhere? Who wants to make you sad? He presses a button, then you become sad. How? How? Because when you remember the person, you grow moody. When you remember the person, you grow weak. 
When you remember the person, you grow tired. When you remember the person, you develop bitterness. When you remember the person, you all of a sudden become very, very bitter. Who is pressing the button of your life? Who is the difficult person in your life? All of us, as long as you are human, you are, you are a human being with blood and uh, with blood and water flowing through your veins. There are some people within your network that seems to have the button, that seems to be pushing the button of your life. They seem to be pushing the button of your life. They seem to have your remote control. This message is a two-part message today and next week. I'm going to be having a brief introduction this morning because I need us to, you and I, to reason, to reflect together. Just as the book of Isaiah says, come, let's reason together. Again, the issue is this. I don't want you to be rushed. Who is controlling the button of your life? Who is pushing your buttons? Who is pushing your buttons? Who has your remote control in his hand? I'm not even talking about positives. Because sometimes you can remember some people and you smile about it. You are happy about it. But I'm talking about the difficult people in your life. In the text that we have read today, if you have your Bibles with you, I want us to meet a man there. His name is called Alexander. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 4, chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Bible says, Alexander the Coppersmith did much, did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his word. <coughs> Alexander the Coppersmith. Alexander the Coppersmith. Mm. Just as our sister also read, if you go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20, you will also see a man that Bible, Bible mm. scholar seems to have agreed. That Paul was also referring to this Alexander here, of whom is Eminius and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. You see, it's so it was so bad. This Alexander man was so was such a crook in the life of, of, of Paul that, that he was just messing up Paul's emotions. He was just messing up Paul's work. He was just messing up Paul's Paul's, Paul's ministry. He was just messing up Paul estate he was just he, he was so much an evil man he was so much an evil man that paul felt wow what else can i do about this alexander the copper what can i do he because he did him so hard so much harm so much harm that paul had to say i hand him over i hand him over to the lord to deal with it i hand him over to the lord to reward him to reward him to reward him and at one time you know two sides of it at one in, in, in chapter in first Timothy, he said, I have delivered him unto Satan. I have delivered him unto Satan. In chapter two, in second Timothy he said, Let God reward him. Let God reward him. There are some difficult people around you. Good for you. If that difficult person is not somebody that you 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 are stuck with. Now let us let's let's relax because I want us to follow it one after the other. Who is the Alexander the Coppersmith of your life? That is the vital question of this introduction. Who is the Alexander the Copper Smith of your own life? I want you to think. I want to reflect. Who is that Alexander the Copper Smith of your own life? Now let's start. Is are you your own self, Alexander? Are you the difficult person of your own life? Are you the one hurting yourself? Are you the one arming yourself? Some people, for example. They ask themselves, they have themselves in their health, in their health, the way with their eating habits, with their exercising habits. They know that the people that do the kind of thing they do will one day collapse, and yet they keep doing it. Why pushing sugar into your system? Lots of sugar. As you say, oh, my taste bug cannot just do. I must take soda. I must take soda. You put, you keep adding. Uh, uh, keep adding soda and sugar into your system. So bringing, making, your, bringing yourself at the point of, uh, 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 at the edge of diabetes, or having high blood pressure, or you are so, you are, you are, your eating habit is such that it's making you now becoming like an obese. Or you are there, you just don't take care of yourself. You don't just, you don't just care about what happens to your body. Yet your body is the vessel that you need. To carry yourself about, to carry yourself far, to do the thing that you want to do. If your body breaks down, you will become a liability. And that's why today you cannot afford to be in the Alexander Nicopasmith of your own personal life. 
with your you can't allow your body to you can't hurt your body you can't keep hurting your body you see some of us you know the way you are with the way you are you need to be careful about even the addiction you have given yourself to some people are hearing me today you know that the addiction that you are committed to that you are you 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 you, you, you seem to be struggling with is hurting you yet you are there today i am praying that god will break that power uh, addiction power in your life you don't have to kill yourself you don't have to hurt yourself stop hurting yourself stop being the alexander the copper smith of yourself all some people it's not their body they are the alexander the copper smith of they are the alexander the copper smith of your life but it is the feed their mind with the kind of movies they watch the kind of things they, they view the kind of things they do to them to their mind the whatever enters your mind has entered your life i want you to hear that again whatever enters your mind has entered your life the mind is the gateway of your life your mind is the gateway of your life your mind is access to your life whatever answer enters into your mind enters into your destiny and that's why today god is telling you and i that we should be careful with how we deal with our mind again i know that we are in a world where the screens almost be is like is synonymous with our lifestyle i was going to my my son's school my daughter's school on friday to pick them from school as i was walking the holy spirit made me to just look at my side a lot of parents had parked their cars they had parked their cars close to 15 cars as i was passing and god said noticed all the people in the car and the people that were even on a motorbike noticed them and the people that were standing by the road noticed them i checked all the about 25 30 people on the road everybody had their answer on their hand and they were glued to the answer and they were doing something on the answer everybody was on the answer nobody was talking to each other before the advent of digital of the, of the answer before the, the the advent of phones those people who have been gathered together interacting as human beings fellowshiping together but today what kind of hours do you give to to to, to the digital device in your your eyes are you the one controlling your answer or your answer is the one controlling you what are you doing on it there is a need for us to have what we call digital minimalization you have to reduce your the amount of time you give to, to this less to be that it is the phones the ai that are controlling you and not you controlling them listen again what kind of things do you watch there are you a person giving to watching things that assess your mind that do not edify you the time you give to this do they edify you do not be the alexander the compassmith of your own life by, by by the things you flood your mind with by the things that do not edify you by the things that do not grow you by the things that do not make you become better than you ought to be number two today <clears throat> who is the alexander the compassmith of your life i sympathize with you if you the alexander the compassmith of your life is your spouse and that is possible it's your spouse that is possible your spouse is supposed to be the one that will love you every woman that is here your husband your husband is to love you till death do us part your husband is to love you just as christ loved the church your husband is to love you and, and you are to love your husband with all of your heart but then some people they have found out for themselves that the alexander the compassmith of your life is their spouse when the alexander the compassmith of your life is your spouse you are in a very precarious situation and you need a lot of wisdom you need a lot of wisdom the bible says in the book of james chapter one is that if anybody lacks wisdom let him ask of god he will give to you library without counting sin against you because when you are with alexander compass meet that is your spouse you need wisdom to manage it you need wisdom to manage it the bible says you know who is alexander compass meet alexander the compass meet is the person that does much harm to you he does much harm this person is your husband 
He is supposed to be in that position where he's supposed to love you, where he's supposed to nurture you, where he's supposed to heal you, where he's supposed to care for you, where he's supposed to support you. This person is your wife. She's supposed to be in the position where you are vulnerable with her, where you know that you can sleep and wake up and, be, and, and if you find yourself in a precarious situation, she will be there to help you. She will be there to support you. She will be there to respect you. She will be there to celebrate you. But people of God, when that is not in place, when that is not in place, it is precarious. The first thing you can do to undo it is a difficult spouse is to pray to God for wisdom. You need wisdom. You need wisdom. You need counsel to manage it. Because some marriages and some relationships, it requires, some marriages and relationships, it requires you for continuous praying, for continuous managing for it. And some requires that you take a step and say, no, 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 this cannot continue. Some require that you discuss. Some require that you confront the issues. You isolate the issues and you discuss the issues. Details of this I will discuss with us even next month. We just want to identify the issues today because you must recognize it. If your spouse is Alexander the Coppersmith, if your spouse is Alexander the Coppersmith, you don't have to die in that in the hands of Alexander the Coppersmith. You need to be very careful. You need to be very careful. Yeah, I am reminded of the story of, of, of Abigail. In the Bible, I began marrying Alexander the coppersmith. She described her husband as a mean man, as a wicked man, as a heartless man. Yet she was in that marriage. It was a very painful one. Eventually, the man died and the woman was able to move forward. I'm not praying that your spouse will die, but I'm saying that you need wisdom to know how to manage the Alexander the Coppersmith you have as a husband, the Alexander the Coppersmith you have as a wife. And for those of us that are single, be careful. Do not go and get uh, yoked with an unbeliever, because that is the beginning of it. A non-believer, not only in your faith, in some people, they go ahead and go into a relationship the person, yes, is a Christian, no doubt. It, it does, you, all Christians cannot marry all Christians. You To think that because you are a Christian, you can marry any Christian, is fallacy. It's fallacy. There are people that do are Christians, but they do not believe the same way you believe. They do not believe the same thing you believe. They don't, have, they don't have the same convictions as you have. As you have. Some people have convictions that are core. They are not willing to negotiate it away. And you go ahead to have marry somebody who has a contrary convictions as you are, and you think you can you can change it, you think you can change her? No, 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 my dear. You will end up living your life with Alexander the Coppersmith, the person that will do you harm, the person that will do you harm. We will talk the details again next week, and I like you to be in church next week. The third category of Alexander the Coppersmith that you might likely have is a sibling. It's a sibling, very painful. How oh, I wish Abel, Abel, Abel will, rec will have had this message. If Abel in the book of Genesis had this message, he would have noticed that Cain, Cain, Cain was Alexander the compass made to him. You see, even though family, there is supposed to be what we call family loyalty. There is supposed to be what we call family respect, family love. Well, because this is my, my mother's son. This is my mother's daughter. This is this is my younger sister. This is my elder brother. We are supposed to be loyal to each other. We are supposed to be friendly to each other. We are supposed to be supportive to each other. But you and I know that sometimes the uh, the, the Alexander the Commandment can show up in your family life. Sometimes it's not even painfully. It's not even between siblings. Sometimes it could be between father and son, between father and daughter. Sometimes it could be between daughter and mother. Oh my God, how I pray that God will help you and give you wisdom and deliver your family from the spirit of Alexander the Compassment. Do you recognize Alexander the Compassment in the, in, in, in the life of Absalom? Absalom and David. You remember their story. Absalom wanted the throne of his father at all costs. He was willing to pay any price. He wanted power. He wanted power. He wanted power. He wanted power that belonged to his father. Even before his time. He, he, before his time. He was prodigal. And yet he was willing to kill his father. 
Remember, it was a painful end that he had. Remember Adonija. Remember Adonija. You see, we are saying that in a family, in the family circle, even though it's not supposed to be, there could be Alexander the Coppersmith. And today I am asking you to pray for wisdom. Remember Jesus Christ too. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He was there preaching. He was there teaching. People were gathered around him. And they were gathered around him. They were gathered listening. Then his brothers and sister and mother, they were outside. Outside the circle. And they sent a message to him. Come here. Come here. And the people said, people said, your father, your mother, your sibling, they are calling you outside. Jesus the carpenter. And Jesus answered and said, who are my brothers and sisters? Who is my father and my mother? Are they not those that are with me? You need to recognize that people of God. A redefinition of family in circle. But that, that does not mean that your family is not supposed to be a blessing. You are supposed to have a family that is loyal. And that's why you need wisdom. You need wisdom. Anybody lack wisdom, let him ask. So that Alexander the Compassion can be destroyed. Can be destroyed. The spirit of Alexander the can be destroyed with your family. Oh, who is Alexander the Compassion? Maybe in your place of work. That takes me to the fourth one. Alexander the Compassion in your place of work. That is one of the most difficult people you can have. Difficult people you have. When you are reporting to a box that does not believe in you. When you are reporting to a boss that is all out to hurt you. When you are reporting to a boss that wants to mess you up. When you are reporting to a boss that will stand on your way of promotion. When you are reporting to a boss oh, that is there to just ensure you are demeaned, that you are demonized. I don't know that you have experienced it before. I have experienced it before. No matter the good I do, this boss does not celebrate it. He goes behind and does other things about me. Is that the kind of thing you, you are experiencing? Oh, maybe you yourself, you are a, and then don't the compass me to another person at the place of work. You are tough. You are hard. You pride in being the person that arms other workers. Your workers and your colleagues are nothing to you. You, are, you do not have humanity in your approach to work. Is that who you have? Are you the Alexander the Compass Meet that wants to destroy every of your colleagues at work? You gossip about them, you ask them, you say bad things about them. Oh, you want to destroy their dream? You vow, you say, over my dead body will that person rise. Don't be like that. If you have an Alexander the Compass Meet for a colleague, if you have an Alexander the Compass Meet for, for, for a boss, if you have an Alexander the Compass Meet for a supporting aid, you need wisdom to manage them. Some people need to be fired. That is the truth. Some people, you need to negotiate your way out of their presence. Some people, you need to insist and say, God, I hand over this person to Satan. I hand over this person to Satan. And the Jesus Compassmith cannot, might not only be at your place of work. They might not be, they might be in your community. You see, we need prayers. These things are serious. The place we once lived before now. All of a sudden, downstairs where we are living, at the basement, a young man came. Oh, there was nothing we ever did. There was nothing we ever did that 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 that, 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 that was peaceful. This man, he reported us. He recorded us. Things were just happening, and these things were not true. They were not true. But he was projecting us to our landlord as if these things were true. And we prayed to God. We saw the face of God. And one day, God touched his heart. And the guy that was cutting us, that was Alexander the Compassive, started paying back to us with good works. With good works. When sometimes we are in this position, what do we do? What do we do? I have been able today to let us know that difficult people are all around. But if you don't nip them at the board, if you don't manage and handle them effectively, you could end up becoming a prey. Difficult people are all around us. Some of them are all out predators. Some of them are emerging predators. Some of them are just difficult, broken people. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 says it. We are all broken. We are all, we are all falling. But then, knowing Jesus redeems a man. What are we saying here today? Let's tie it together. Buttons. Who is that copper spirit in your life? Buttons. Who has the remote control of in your hand? Buttons. Who is the person that when you, as I'm talking now, you are remembering them, and you are developing anger. They are the one controlling you. Today, 
take control of your life from them. Take control of your life from them. Deliver yourself from them. Three things to do quickly for today. And we'll continue on next week. Number one. There are people in your network. Hit the delete button now. They don't have business staying on your network. They don't have business staying there. You know how Jesus puts it? Jesus says, if your right hand makes you to sing, cut it off. That's what Jesus said. There are people in your network. You don't stay away from your circle. Negative vibes. Negative energy. They do not see anything good with you. They do not see anything right with you. They will never see anything right with you. They are waiting for an evil story. An evil story to happen about you. So they can say, I said so. They are waiting for you to fall. May they wait forever. They are waiting for you to die. May they wait forever. So there was this group of people. They began to fast. And they banded the sun to a road. Can you see that? It sounds religious. They were fasting and they were on road. They said, we will not break our fast until we kill Paul. Look at that. Look at that kind of enmity. Look at that kind of hatred. <laughs> if you have such people around your life, and they are in your circle, what do you do? Get out of their circle. Take them out of your circle. Eat, delete. Eat, delete. You, see, you cannot please everybody in life. You cannot please everybody in life. Hello? You cannot please everybody in life. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, I need you to educate. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. You cannot please everybody in life. How many people do you want to have in your circle? Don't be a people pleaser. Some people need to go. Let them go. <laughs> Let me give you an example quickly. In the story of Abraham and Lot. Abraham was a fantastic guy. Lot was a fantastic guy. But when these people began to have issues among themselves, what happened? God said, let Lot go. This morning, some people need to go out of your life. Identify them. Pray to God for wisdom and let them go. Hit the button, the delete button. Hit the delete button. I'm praying that God will help us in, in, in the name of Jesus. Number two, what do you do? Pray. Pray for wisdom. Because if you are already in a convenient relationship like marriage and family, you need wisdom to navigate it and seek counsel. Go see a counselor to know exactly how to manage your particular situation. Number three, you need wisdom. If you are not already in a marital relationship, but you are about to enter into one, and you know it is a toxic relationship, it's time to say, I can't allow this to happen. But it's who is handling the control of your life. God wants us today to be faithful to him. Let me round up today by saying, the key word is to pray for wisdom. And God is willing to give you wisdom to handle the difficult persons of your life. I pray that as we continue, during this week, may you be above all the difficult people of your life in Jesus' name. May you be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. May, may, the, may the powers of the difficult people in your life, may their toxicity, May, 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 may it be neutralized completely in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be free, free, free in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, in your life. As you undo these difficult people, they will not be the one controlling your life henceforth. So shall it be. I assess freedom in Jesus Christ's name we we'll pray. Amen. I want to just pray a word of prayer for yourself. And that is, Lord, I will not be a, I will not be toxic against myself. I will not be a toxic person against myself. Just pray that prayer. 
every toxicity, every self-inflicted toxicity. Block it out of my life, O oh Lord. Give me fresh perspective. Give me fresh insight. Help me to manage myself well, O oh Lord. Help me to, to be according to your word. Help me not to be the Alexander the compassionate of my own life. In the name of Jesus. Father Lord, today I pray concerning all the Alexander the compassionate around me. Identify them. Isolate them. Take them out of my circle. Identify them. Isolate them. Take them out of my circle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. May your name be praised, O oh Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor, for that message. God bless you and bless us all in Jesus' name. We are going to sing a hymn, brethren. Let us walk together in the bonds of love and peace. Can it be a question whether brethren should conflict cease? This, this in union, hope and joy and love increase. Let us sing together. Brethren, let us walk together in the bonds of love and peace. Can it be a question whether brethren should from conflict cease? This in union, this in union, hope and joy and love increase. This in union, this in union, hope and love and joy increase. While we journey onward, let us help each other on the road falls on every side we set us snakes through all the way we strewn it behoves us it behoves us it should be a brother's load it behoves us it behoves us to be a brother's though when we think more how much our father has forgiven and does forgive brethren we should let the brother be from rot and strife to live far removing far removing all that might offend or grieve far removing far removing all that might offend or grieve. Then let each of them is brother, better than himself to be. And let each prefer another, full of love from every free. Happy, happy, happy are we when in this we all agree. Happy are we, happy are we when in this we all agree. Amen. 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 God bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We, we appreciate God again for today. Uh, we want to appreciate God for all of us that were able to make it today to worship. May God bless us real good in the name of Jesus. Can you just say a word of prayer for yourself this week and for your family? Just say, God, I bless my family this week. Let's just say a word of prayer. I bless my family this week. I bless my spouse this week. I bless my children this week. I bless my 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 network this week. And I say, Lord, we, we all prosper this week. This week will be a week of good news. 
a week of testimonies, a week of uncommon answers to prayers. Thank you, everlasting Father. May your name be praised, O Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Can we share the grace together in fellowship solemnly? The grace. The grace the of, our Lord, of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The Lord of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now, now, now and forever. forevermore. Amen. 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 All the days of our lives, uh, and we shall, we shall dwell, dwell in the house, in the house of, of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Amen.